Welcome to another installment of Golfster TV. Well, as we saw earlier today, I pretty much opted out for that surf. It was a little, you know, big, chunky, and kind of cold. And if I didn't have so much work to do right now, I, I probably would have went and caught a session. But we're going to wrap it up. We've done the last uh, fin placements for the day, and we're going to close down the shop. We're going to go up and visit a uh, senior meteorologist at NOAA, Rick Davis, and. He's going to fill us in on this El Nino and how it's been affecting uh, the surf here in the Gulf and in Florida in general and what we should expect here uh, into spring. Um, we'll be right back. All right, so I've arrived at the National Weather Service up here in Ruskin and we're going to go in and talk about El Nino and our upcoming uh, season here for spring and late winter. Operations area. I'm in here in the National Weather Service with uh, my good friend Rick Davis. Welcome. And uh, we're here. We're going to talk about Smell Nino and uh, how it's impacted our our surf that we've been getting this uh, winter and how it's going to affect uh, coming into spring. So I'm not going to do a lot of talking. I'm going to let Rick take this away because he's the expert here. Yeah. Thanks, Tommy. Uh, we've had a very active winter. El Nino is in place. Uh, what we can usually expect for an El Nino pattern is uh, what we're seeing here on the screen where uh, what we call a split flow pattern where we have our jet stream. Uh, we have this really uh, active Pacific jet stream that goes essentially from Hawaii over uh, California, over Mexico, uh, spins up storms in, in the Gulf of Mexico and moves over Florida into the Atlantic. And man, we've really been seeing that a lot lately the last four to six weeks. Uh, what we're looking at over here on the left hand screen is actually our upper level jet stream. So here's what's, what we have tonight. We have an active jet stream here over Florida pulling off the east coast. And this active jet stream is what's making those big Atlantic uh, uh, storms that we've been seeing uh, over the last couple days. It's also producing some Gulf lows for us. And what we're seeing is here's Hawaii. So we have that connection, that subtropical connection from Hawaii uh, across the eastern Pacific, right on over Mexico through the Gulf of Mexico and up the western Atlantic. Uh, that's today. And we keep going in time. And the, it, the, the, the pattern continues. Uh, it, it's amplified. It's a very progressive, fast pattern. So we're just going to have these fronts, wave producers, uh, time and time again for the next couple months. Uh, so what we're expecting with El Nino, traditionally El Nino really kicks in for us in January, February, and March, and it certainly did. Uh, January 1st, we had some of our first waves of the season um, and, and got cold, our cold fronts, uh, good storm systems. So the Climate Prediction Center has this El Nino pattern continuing at least in, through March and into April, and then we're gonna start to transition to a, a, a neutral pattern. So we can expect a fairly active winter, and we'll get waves. I'm expecting a, some sort of wave every three to five days. So the swell that uh, they're going to be holding the Eddie Ical tomorrow, we should be expecting to see that, you know, probably next week. So we do have, right, the systems, here's our Pacific uh, jet stream here. You know, that's almost 180, 190 knot jet stream. That actually does, and here it comes, and it dives down south and little pieces of it do, are going to impact us here next week. So, um, and, and then the next system that's going to produce huge waves for Hawaii here, again, split flow, and we, you know, we just keep continuing in that pattern. So it's definitely active, and, and a wave, uh, essentially Hawaii, California, the Gulf, and the Atlantic are all getting surf out of this. Yeah, it's, been, uh, it's been quite an active uh, start to 2016, to say the least. Absolutely. Uh, it seemed like a the tropics held on there for quite a while during, you know, the fall, and all of a sudden the wave machine just turned on for this year. And I don't think there's any complaints from anybody about that. Yeah, for sure. I, it was warm uh, fall, like you said. El Nino traditionally suppresses activity in the fall for us, and then turns on around the first of the year, and that's exactly what it did this year. Okay, so 
going out even a little farther, what do you think this is going to have an impact, say, even into the May, early June style when we do head back into the tropics? What, what can we expect? And then I'm looking a little farther ahead and I'm trying to more keep this kind of geared towards what we've been dealing with locally and what we're going to get into the next few months. But May and June, what should we expect? Right. So, like I said, we're going to transition from a really strong El Nino that we have now to a neutral pattern. So we're not, the El Nino should fade and will be in our normal pattern by May and June, which is the start of early tropical season. So the Gulf of Mexico has gotten, uh, you know, in the last 10 years, I think we've had four or five early tropical storms in the Gulf of Mexico in June. Um, so we should have it back to a normal pattern with the potential for a, a, a weaker storm possibly in June. Uh, and then the tropics should be more active this year than they were last year because of the, the uh, El Nino won't be present. Now, when we talk of El Nino, do you and we say it's actually going to be suppressing and then relaxing. Is that going to shift it towards maybe a La Nina pattern? So uh, traditionally, when you have a strong El Nino, the next winter you, it can potentially go into a strong La Nina. So um, and the early indications are we're not forecasting a strong La Nina um, at this time. Um, that's not to say it couldn't develop in a year from now, so we better enjoy the waves we have now uh, be in, in the summer because uh, next fall, possible, um, uh, if we go into a La Nina pattern, that's less swell makers yeah, for I'm us. I'm not trying to get too far ahead. I'm definitely... Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's let's pretty far ahead. Enjoy this, this late winter and this early spring. Um, another question, uh, these water temperatures, what should we expect out of the next few weeks? So. Uh, what we have with the water temperatures, um, this is a, a, a satellite image of the sea surface temperatures. It's one of uh, uh, NASA's new um, polar orbiting satellites that, that twice a day will take water temperatures. So what we have, what blue here is very cold water in the 50s, and uh, the, the green is water is in the upper 60s and 70s, and the, the yellow out here is almost 80 degree water. So along the eastern northeast Gulf of Mexico and around the Bay Area and even down into uh, say Sarasota, uh, Venice area, this, this colder water has been uh, heading south when we have northwest winds, north winds, northeast winds, all of that pulls that cold water south. What we see uh, out in the Gulf of Mexico, this is our loop current, it's always there, it's nice and warm, uh, goes through the Florida Straits, becomes the Gulf Stream. That's why our uh, folks out on the East Coast, the water is traditionally much warmer, uh, especially uh, than it is on our side at the same latitude. Over in uh, the Melbourne area, water temp should be about is about 68 now, and we're uh, about 60 degrees. So they're about 8 to 10 degrees warmer on the other side of the coast. So um, water temperature is definitely cold uh, until we get a really strong southerly uh, component to the wind that brings some of this warmer water north. We're going to stay cold for a while. Okay, so looking into uh, next week, what do you think uh, the next, uh, you know, arrival for our next low or next storm from uh, this active uh, pattern we've been getting? Sure, so, uh, you know, a lot of folks that I talk to um, are real curious about the wave models and, and how the forecast pans out in the, in the short term and the long term. Um, a lot of the, the uh, websites you see online that forecast wave models use one model uh, or another, and they base their entire forecast off of one model. Well, here at the Weather Service, we have dozens of models to choose from. <coughs> uh, this is an example of nine different wind models. So we have global models, we have regional models, and we have high resolution models that we run right here in the office. So we can pick the best models that are handling the situation the best, and we can run our wave models off of the best wind field that we feel possible and that gets us the best wave uh, forecasting and um, wind waves over the Gulf for our mariners and surf uh, forecast. So uh, going through time we can see some of these models and this is tomorrow morning so some of the models actually you know we have strong westerly winds all night some of the models actually bring some uh, some near northerly winds uh, along some of the area beaches for a, a, a brief cleanup in the morning so 
a lot of the global models keep uh, uh, onshore winds for choppy conditions. So if you know which model to look at uh, and where to look, that uh, there are indications for some cleaner days. And this morning was a good example where a lot of the, the, the entire coast was onshore winds. There was a few select spots in the morning that had uh, fairly clean conditions. And I expect the same tomorrow. Um, and then, so we take these forecast, we take these winds and we produce our, um, our forecasting database that we're able to produce. These are our sea heights. Um, and this is for today, which we had some uh, 11, 12 foot seas offshore. And going in time, this is overnight, we're still going to have some 10 foot seas. And even towards morning, some of these 9, 10 foot seas are going to be making their way along the beaches. And our winds at that time, so we, we picked the best winds we, we could find. We put them in our forecast, so you have some 9, 10 foot seas coming ashore. And we do have, uh, like I said, at some of our select locations, some offshore winds uh, in Manatee County. Uh, some areas uh, in Pinellas County have some offshore winds. Well, we're in northern Pinellas, our, our side shore. Now, that's not going to last too long. Um, our models are bringing, by the afternoon, now the wind is, is side shore, onshore, everywhere. Some extra barbs on And some too. extra barbs, and they're going to pick up. So the morning is our best shot. Now, a lot of our information is available online if you know where to look for it. Um, our website, which we have over here, is uh, weather.gov slash Tampa. And that brings you to everything we produce out of this office right here. We have marine forecast. We have what we call a point and click forecast. So where you live on Anna Maria Island, you can get a different forecast for your little sliver of Anna Maria Island as opposed to somebody that lives up in Madeira Beach or, or, or even our, our folks that live over on Cocoa Beach. So uh, we're producing forecasts that are, differ slightly from everywhere you are in the county. Rule of thumb, kiddies. Every forecast isn't the same. Better check a few. Every one, take it with a grain of salt. This guy knows his shit. <laughs> so, um, we really do a good job here. We, everybody, you know, uh, tries to make the most accurate forecast for temperatures, um, rain chances, uh, fog, uh, wave heights, wind direction and speed. So, um, there's a lot of information that we're able to give you guys and you know when i see guys out in the water just ask me i'll point you in the right direction but there's a lot of information that can help you uh you know pr get a better surf break find out when there's going to be surf a whole lot more information than when we were kids oh, we didn't have anything anything like this when we were growing up in, in little grom so so there's a lot more information it's available online and uh you know tommy does a great report in the morning and um, you know but check back because things can change quickly well I really appreciate you allowing us to come up here and come in the office. It's uh, it's been a dream a long time to see what really goes on behind the scenes out here. And I tell you what, we rely on most of our information, you know, solely from what we gather from what these guys are doing here in this office. So I just want to say thank you yeah. very much for having us in here. And yeah, no problem, Tommy. For Golfster TV, Tommy Daniels, and this is Rick Davis. All right, guys. We'll see you next time.